Thanks for joining us uh, for another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. It's my pleasure to invite an Israeli ambassador to Boom and Bust. His Excellency Eli Hazan is Israel's ambassador to Singapore, and he joins us from that country. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. It's, it's, my, it's our pleasure. Uh, I'd love to get a sense uh, as my first question, uh, for, uh, you know, based on your interactions and communications uh, with Israel, what the mood is of Israelis uh, months removed from the, the, from the terrible uh, October 7th uh, massacre. Tell us a little bit about the mood of Israelis currently. You know, on one hand, uh, it's the most complicated hour of our, uh, of our history of the state. On the other hand, we are focusing to get a victory against Hamas because one, that's what I've said in the beginning. For me, this is the second independence day. I mean, Hamas has been a threat to the state of Israel. Everybody knows the attacks from October 7th. And therefore, we are, we are quite decisive. We are going to eliminate Hamas. We will do whatever needed in order to do it. And I believe that the majority of the majority of the Israelis are in favor. Of course, there is a minority who is against it, mm-hmm. um, but in general, and you could see a lot of unity. This is something uh, new for us after, you know, the disagreements when it comes to the judicial uh, uh, judicial reform. Uh, this is, uh, you know, Churchill used to say the finest hour of the British people during World War II. Uh, I feel it's not the same, of course, this is completely different, but I feel the same sense. Yeah, and uh, really, uh, it's it's such a complicated environment too, and it's amazing that that unity does exist because you you know really uh, the government uh, of Israel has a dual mission, which you mentioned uh, the eradication of Hamas, but there's also trying to release those hostages. So I know there must be a lot of pressure on both of those fronts. Yes, but. Um... Those are the two big challenges, but as you know, and as the world could see in the past, we could achieve uh, this kind, I would say, of allegedly uh, contradicted, uh, I would say, targets. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to take people back to uh, July 4th, 1976, when we were able to save many of the Israeli hostages in Entebbe. On the one, on the other hand, people must remember that this time the war against Hamas is completely different. It's not a conventional war, in a sense that the war is happening below the surface because of the tunnels. Uh, not all of the battles is on the ground. Many of them are below the ground, and this is a new challenge. In fact, we are speaking for the first time in the history of the world that we have this kind of warfare. It's very, I, I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine, but I, I think you're absolutely right that there's, uh, uh, that, that the challenge for the Israeli defense forces is, is to, to go into this enemy territory below ground, try to look for hostages, try to eliminate the enemy uh, in such a hostile environment. That must be part of the challenge, right? Uh, yeah, no doubt about it. And you have to remember that we have what we call the limitation of the world. I mean, think about it. Many of the people in the world do not know the complicated situation. They don't know that, in general, we don't want to harm uh, civilians, innocent people. But on the other hand, we have no other choice because Hamas uses people as a human shield. Mm-hmm. Take, for instance, hospitals, uh, schools, and so on and so forth, where there are headquarters of uh, of Hamas terrorists. And we have no other choice but to eradicate Hamas. The war is not going to end without eradication of Hamas. Leave the Israelis aside. We are, we are giving it as a service to the world because if the war will end and Hamas will come up as victorious, it, it will be the problem of the world. It will be the challenge. Maybe the biggest challenge of the Western world and of the democracies. Uh, so in that case, I would ask my friends from abroad be patient. Let us do the job. We will eradicate Hamas, and then we will be able to build something new in the Middle East. Uh, and I think that's an important point because uh, the the actual aspect of uh, Israel's war just really just started in November, and uh, 
We're only uh, at the beginning of February now, so I think that's an important point. We're going to take a brief break, uh, Ali. We've got to uh, have our commercial break, but there's lots of uh, lots of other important questions to, to be asked. So hang in there. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 